So let me show you now how to insert one of those quick quizzes for your students into your page content. I'm on a page, I want to go to my library and drag out of the library the option which reads quiz and place it on the page where I want the quiz to appear. I'm going to detach it from original in order to edit this content. And before I even go any further than that, I'm going to save the page and show you this in the browser so you can look at what we can expect. So in the browser, it's in one of these little quick quiz blue boxes. There's some descriptive text and then the quiz itself appears underneath here. With that in mind, let's relate this back to what we see when we look at the same thing in Dreamweaver. Okay, so we've got our quiz box. Here it is here. We can give that a title, of course. Now you can place some content in here and I actually encourage you to do so. It could be a passage of text, it could be a video that you want your students to watch, it could be anything, but related of course to the quiz that you're about to set. So in this example, just because I can, I'm going to place a video in. Um, go to my browser. You've seen me do this in a previous recording. I'm going to get the embed code. Here it is here. I'm going to go back to Dreamweaver and I'm going to use this little quick editor, quick tag editor, to paste in that embed code and whiz bang we've got our video in place. We want to follow that video with our quiz and this is where this text within the grey box becomes all important because the program is actually going to take this and make a quiz out of it. And so there are some conventions that I'll, I'll talk you through here. It, it's um, important that you stick to the recipe, I guess, in order to ensure that the quiz works as you expect it to. So the first thing is you get to give it a heading, description and feedback. And that's simply a matter of editing the text. The feedback that you see here is actually a general feedback. It appears right at the end of the quiz. And then lower down, there's some sample questions which you can use and change, but I'm going to build this from scratch. I'll just show you that there's a bit of a recipe happening here. There's a question which starts with a number, a number of alternative answers, a C which indicates it's the correct answer and an I for the incorrect answer. So let me take this out and I'll build this entirely from scratch so you can see how it's done but you might choose just to use those templates instead. So the first thing is questions always start with a number and the first type of question I'm going to build is a multi-choice question. So I pose the question. Underneath that I put the alternative answers and of course at some stage I'm going to indicate which answer is correct. So for correct answer I give it a plus symbol to indicate that that's correct. For incorrect answers I give it a minus symbol. Then I can give feedback about the quiz question itself. So I do that by putting C for correct. So C and letter col and colon. I and colon for incorrect. So I'm going to proceed and to I've create my a first question. question. Let's now. continue with another. So I start with a number and a full stop. I pose the question. You indicate the correct answer again with a plus. And in this case, surprising, the answer is true. And the incorrect with a minus. Effectively, true false, by the way, is the same as a multiple choice, just with two alternative answers. Again, I need to give correct feedback. So C and colon.
And let's proceed now to make a final question type. This is going to be a multiple response, which one or more of the following are true. Now with this, we can have, in fact, more than one correct answer. So the first correct answer is lint. Incorrect answers start with a minus. So I've written my question. I'm going to put in the correct feedback. The incorrect feedback. And we're done. I'm saving that now and I'm going to return to my browser to see what has happened. So we now have our video in place, that's good. We scroll down, the quiz appears here with our uh, title and uh, description. You can see now the question type uh, appears. If you recall, this is actually the last question that we wrote and yet it's appearing here as the first question for the students, it randomizes that order and indeed the order of items here is also different than the one that I created it. So it's quite good at mixing things up for your students. If you get it correct or incorrect you're given the feedback that you would put in. I better get at least one question right. Okay. So I've completed the quiz now. When I hit the next button after the last question, I get my score, I get that generic feedback that we'd put into the question, and then lower down, I get basically a review of what the question was, what choices I made, and whether I was correct or incorrect for each question. So it's actually quite good at giving some immediate feedback to students. And of course, if students choose to, they can hit the try again button and go for it again. question now. Now really a true false is a multiple choice question with two answers. So let's have a go with one of those. So I start the question with a number and a full stop. I give put the question. So I've got my question in place. I can indicate answers. It jumbles these answers up, so it doesn't matter which order you place them in. But in this case, the answer, correct answer is true. So I'll put a plus in front of it and say true. And then minus for the false. And now I'm going to do a multiple response. Which one or more of the following are true? So in this case, I have multiple correct answers, so I indicate each correct answer with a plus. Let's go ahead. Um, I'm just going to choose some random questions now. So 
that's a correct answer. And then some incorrect answers. So notice the pattern there. Any correct answers I put a plus in front, any incorrect I put a minus and it doesn't matter in what order you present those because the programming will jumble them up. So that'll do for now. I've got my questions, they're all in place. I'm going to save this and I'm going to return now to the browser and just see what has happened. So let's refresh our browser. It starts with the video. Oops, before I go Oops, before I go any further, I better give correct and incorrect feedback for those additional two questions. Let me do that really quickly. Okay. So our recipe again is questions start with a number, a number of alternatives, the plus indicates correct answers, minus incorrect answers, and then they're followed with a C colon for correct feedback and an I colon for incorrect feedback. Okay, I'm going to save that now. Return to my browser and see what has happened. Okay, so we've got our video in place. You'll notice the quiz below. You hit get started. Here are our questions. They're in a, a random order. They appear in an order different to the ones that I created. So it mixes the questions up. It also mixes the alternatives up. So you can see that with those multiple response questions, which one or more are the correct or true, it provides these check boxes that you can tick and see whether you've got that ant correct or incorrect. And then when it comes to our multiple choice, we've now got radio buttons. And also for our true false, we have radio button answers. When we hit the next button at the end of all of that, it gives us some feedback about how we went. So you'll notice down here now, it shows the question, the choices that you made and whether that was correct or incorrect, recalling that this is the feedback that you'd put into the quiz. And we also have the opportunity to try the quiz again and see whether we can get a better answer this time. So that's it.